Hello again. I'd like to read out the opening sentence or two from this girl's school story, which was published in 1925. It's called Bunty of the Blackbirds, and it is about a group of girl guides. One more week and we shall be in camp, said Theo Burton. Won't it be glorious, said Eileen Draycott. I do hope we shall have it fine, said Mary Wilde. Doesn't matter much if we don't, said Petronella Maine, who was usually known as Peter. The first thing you will observe is that two of the girls mentioned have adopted boys' names, Peter and Theo. This, there was at one time nothing remarkable about this. It was common enough. There has long been a tradition in Britain of girls between the ages of perhaps 10 and 16 who prefer to behave like boys and do boys' things rather than more usual feminine things. Sometimes they even like to be thought of as boys rather than girls. One remembers George in the famous five books who preferred to act like a boy and even wear boys' clothes. She may be seen in the thumbnail to this video. The book which I have just read from is about girl guides, and of course the girl guides were originally founded for just this kind of girl. Those who wanted to climb trees, go camping and so on, instead of staying at home doing needlecraft. In other words, the guides catered for the needs and desires of tomboys, girls who wanted to do boys things and to live and sometimes even dress like boys. One seldom hears the expression tomboy these days, but they've been with us for an awfully long time. For quite a few girls, this was a perfectly normal stage of development. At the age when both boys and girls uh, are experimenting with their identities and trying out various personas. This passing phase was sometimes shocking to conservative and religious parents, but most people just accepted that this was how some girls were for a few years. We see this development in uh, literature with uh, characters like Scout in To Kill a Mockingbird and so on. Most people thought nothing of it, and the tomboy was just another kind of girl, often in sharp contrast with the more girly kind of girl who liked pretty dresses. Once in a while, such tomboys might get stuck at this stage and grow up to be butch lesbians, but that was always rare. 99.9% .9 of them would turn into ordinary young women and look back on their boyish days with amusement. Then, a few years ago, something quite extraordinary and awful happened. Such girls were told via the internet that this transient phase of childhood and adolescence was in fact a permanent condition and that the best thing they could do would be to undergo sterilisation and have their breasts amputated. Put like that, of course, this development sounds utterly shocking, which in fact it is. Children and adolescents have always experimented in this way with different ideas about who they are. Very small children sometimes pretend to be cats or dogs or fairies. Older kids play at being secret agents, and teenagers sometimes persuade themselves that they are Marxists or Goths. This is all very natural and healthy and nothing remarkable. By the time they reach 20 or 25 at the oldest, most of this has faded away, and a good job too. It would be an unfortunate world if uh, all the adults were still behaving as they did when they were at university, say, or the way they behaved when they were 10 or 3. What is now happening is that a bunch of militant activists have teamed up with irresponsible members of the medical profession to focus on one of these childhood games and are offering girls the chance to make this temporary aberration permanent and lifelong. Unfortunately, adolescent girls have always had a tendency to more dangerous crazes, such as self-harming and starvation, and this ties in with this, that kind of thing. Social media accelerates and turbocharges these trends so that one sees so-called pro-anna 
websites which teach girls how to starve themselves to death without their families noticing. Other websites encourage them to bind up their breasts so hard that they cannot be seen and to start taking drugs and hormones which might render them infertile or give them a disposition towards cancer or osteoporosis in later life. It would be a very nice thing if we could stop trying to encourage girls to either starve themselves to death or mutilate their bodies. But I have an idea that this sort of craze will probably just run its natural course before it disappears. I do think, though, that in 10 or 20 years, we're going to look back on the efforts of the sex change industry with as much horror as we are called the medical experiment of Joseph Mengele's, and we are likely to see an avalanche of claims brought against NHS clinics which participated in the business.